I think in the end, what we all need is to embrace the chaos. Woo! You and I, just yelling off the balcony. Late July, just waiting for your friends to leave. And finally, so can we, so can we. What? In the back of the car, you're trying to stay awake. I can tell through the stars that we're out of LA. With your hand in your mouth, the window like you're riding on a wave. I'm no good at goodbyes. Well, there's been some requests that actually I take a couple minutes to just answer some questions from some fans and so uh printed off some some of these great comments that I've posted and uh, I just want to share them with you and see if I can address some of the things that you guys have been asking about. Um, so the first one comes from Van Dyke Rules 84. Huh. Um, why do you always wear the exact same thing in your videos? Well, that's... It's not really much of a, I mean, I, I it's not like the the undershirt is clean. Like today, I have a green shirt on. Okay, so like it's totally like okay. Back to the content question. Sorry, right, right, right. okay. Uh, next one is from PVD Bio. Sounds a, okay. Uh, are you aware that no one's watching your videos? Well, well, that cannot be true because if no one's watching, then how do you have time to actually post these comments? So clearly, you're actually watching these videos. Next question. Uh, Good about that. This, is, this is not okay. All right, all right. This one's from uh, Phil. It's Phil. Um, are are you uh, purposely making? Sorry, let me re read that again. Why is your intro to your video actually longer than your content? Do you feel like the students are actually learning anything? Okay, listen. I. I. I I, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. Uh, um, let's, let's just do one more question. Okay, um, the last one, it says it's from uh, Philip Not Bill 84 Oh, Van Dyke, I cannot believe you wrote, okay. Um, where do you get your inspiration from for your videos? Oh, nice, a good question. Uh, most of my inspiration comes from, no, no, I read the whole question, like, that's what it said. Where do you get your inspiration from, from your videos? Oh. Because they're awful and you should stop with every... Okay, I don't know whose idea it was to have this video thing where we would comment on each other's stuff, but this is a terrible idea. Can we just... Yes, I'm looking at you What would you little maniacs like to do first? Watch you through my fingers Watch you through my fingers Shuts my eyes and count to ten It goes in one ear out the other One ear out the other Burning bright right till the end Photographs missing from the photo I don't want to lie to you. This next part is really hard. What we're presented with now is an example of a reaction taking place where we're given the grams of the starting reactants and asked to solve for the grams of the final products. This is extremely challenging because, as we learned before, our BCA tables only work when we're actually in moles or quantities. Grams, you have to remember in chemistry, is not a quantity. It is merely a means for keeping track of quantity if we convert. In other words, we have to convert these grams into moles if we want to do anything. Before we begin that, we should probably start by just balancing this chemical reaction. That's better. When I was a young boy, my father 
took me in chemistry class to see a bunch of moles so here's our general equation that we're looking at we have what it is saying for us is that there are two HCl molecules that will react with one zinc atom to help produce one zinc chloride compound and then one hydrogen molecule. So if we're visualizing that, we're almost thinking of this HCl as sort of this setup of, I don't know, a molecule kind of similar like this, interacting with this zinc particle to help create, mm, let's just add a little color there, this zinc chloride compound, and then one H2 molecule. And you can see the H is popular from there. The zinc interacting with BCL2s, and we have a single replacement reaction. But what our, we're really trying to focus in on now is how much do we actually create? And the problem is we're in grams. And for us to truly understand this, we need to go beyond grams if we want to start looking at our BCA, our before, our change, and our after because our BCAs only work when we talk about quantities. And grams is a mass. It's like trying to describe anything we buy in terms of mass. While it still can be some form of quantity, it doesn't tell you how many we have. And if we're looking at this particle diagram right here, we need to know how many we have, not just how much they actually have in terms of mass. But if you remember way back when, we had a way to go from grams into actual particles called moles. So before I do anything, I'm actually going to start by looking at the moles of each of these substances. So I'll start by looking at the HCl. The HCl, we can take the 50.0 grams of HCl and convert it into moles by looking at its molar mass. Now, hydrogen has a molar mass of 1.01 grams per mole, coming from my periodic table. Chlorine has a mass of 35.45. Them all. So if I were to add those two together, we end up with 36.46 grams per mole. And so if I take a look at that, 50 grams, we can tell we're already over one mole, but are we quite two? Yeah. Run the math real quick. I end up with about 1.38 moles of HCl, which is great. And that tells me specifically that instead of just having 50 grams in my before, I'm starting with 1.38 moles of HCl. But what about the zinc? If we do the same sort of process, looking at just the zinc here, we could take the 50 grams of zinc and again convert it into moles. Getting rid of our grams, one mole of zinc looking at our periodic table is about 65.39 grams on our periodic table. So if I were to divide these two, you can see we're a little less than one mole. We're roughly 0.77 moles. Now what's nice about this particular problem is that we can go ahead and jump back to our BCA and say, hey, I'm at 1.38 moles of my HCl and around 0.77 moles of my zinc. I can go ahead and get rid of this little chart and just focus in on specifically what do I have before the reaction, during the change, and after. Now keep in mind, I'm going to draw this little line here to help us represent initially and then our final setup. When we go through this BCA chart, it's almost like we are going into moles to actually compare and then we'll bump back out of moles when we're all done. But our moles will constantly be sort of our way to go in between these individual pieces. Now determining which one is actually the one they react in, there's a couple different ways you could do this. First of all, we got to look at the actual change process. Initially, there'll be no zinc chloride and no hydrogen. And that's just because we're starting a reaction from our various reactants and we have no products. During the change process, we will lose two HCLs and one zinc to help produce one zinc chloride, and one hydrogen molecule. Now we don't know how many different moles of reactions are going to take place, so we're just going to annotate that with X. We do know for every two we lose, we'll gain one here and gain one there. So overall, when this reaction goes to the completion, we'll end up with 1.38 moles minus 2X, 
0.77 moles minus x, and then just a value of x for each of our products. And the key is realizing that one of these things is going to go to zero, but you don't always know exactly which one. If you're pretty good with ratios, you should be able to see it just by looking at these starting values. These are supposed to interact in a one to two ratio. For every one zinc, we'll have two HCLs that need to interact. If you look closely, two times 0.77, well, let's just call this 0.7, that should be about 1.4, because seven times two is 14. And if you don't believe me, you could try it out. Now, sometimes the ratio is not really nice, like a two to one ratio. In this particular case, I am already noticing that my limiting reactant is gonna be my HCF. Well, let's suppose I had no idea and I was just gonna say, well, which one runs out? Set your first one equal to zero and see what X ends up being. So if we go ahead and solve for X, we know that 1.38 moles is equal to two X. Therefore, X is 1.38 moles over two, or a value of 0.69 moles. Now what that means is that if we run this reaction to completion using just the HCl, we'll run a total of 0.69 times 10 to the times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd reactions, which is not super important to us, but that's sort of what it's representing here, to actually run to completion. Now what we care about is if that's the value of x, if we were to plug it in, would we still have some leftovers? And in this particular case, we can see yes. So what we just found out was HCl was our limiting reactant. This is the one that's going to run out, and our zinc will be our excess. If, for example, we had seen this take place where this number was 0.8, you'd see this number is a negative value. Well, that means we picked the wrong limiting reactant. So we cancel this part out and then try it again using just the zinc. Now what's nice for us is as soon as we find out the value of x, we know that the HCl is going to run to zero. We know the zinc would just be 0.77 minus 0.69 in moles. And we know the value of each of these as well. Now the only thing that makes this problem any more challenging than it is, is that we have to get rid of the mole process. We're going to come into the moles, run through the reaction, and then get out of moles. And you may ask, well, why are we doing that? You have to realize that in chemistry, we're using incredibly small pieces, and we're trying to make sense of these incredibly small pieces by massing them out. So if we have a mass, we basically know the particles because we know how much one weighs. The problem is we have to have a mass to particles to mass, so that we can actually do it at a lab scale. So let's take this to the final step. We now know that these zinc chloride that's going to form is going to be roughly 0.69 moles, but that's not what the problem is actually asking. The problem is asking us how many grams we form. And so if we take a look at it from that perspective, If I know 0.69 moles of zinc chloride are going to form, I could of course take the 0.69 moles of zinc chloride and convert them back into grams, getting rid of moles. Now zinc chloride, I'm going to have to add up. Zinc is 65.39. Chlorine, which we have two of, is 35.45. Now these are both grams per mole because they're more masses. So the molar mass of zinc 2 chloride, I need to add those up really quickly to figure that out. And that ends up being about 136.29 grams per mole. So 136.29 grams, and I would just go ahead and multiply that by 0.69, and I end up with about 94.04 grams. And so our answer to our question on this particular problem is a total of around roughly 94 grams of zinc 2 chloride, or just zinc chloride in this case, would be formed. Now the other part of the problem is asking, okay, well how much leftover of the excess would there be? Well again, this is relatively easy because we already determined how much excess is left over. If we take a look and put this X in, 0.77 minus 0.69 tells us how many moles are left over. And so if we look at that, we know there's roughly 0.8 
moles left. And so if we have 0 0.08 moles left over, well, we could again look back at the very top of this and say, hey, my excess, in this case 0 0.08 moles, could be put right back into grams. And so if we take this zinc, we'd say I have 0 0.08 moles of zinc, let's convert this back into grams, getting rid of moles, knowing that one mole of zinc is about 65.39. So 65.39 times 0.08 gives us an answer about 5.23 grams of zinc left over. And all of this was possible because we had set up the BCA chart to show us how this is going to be changing as we go through the process. Everything that we've done so far is being wrapped into one chart. And what we're looking at is that these coefficients are telling us the interaction. We're seeing the change take place as it goes through. And we end up finding out, as we make a total of 94.04 grams of zinc 2 chloride, we have a leftover of 5.23 grams of zinc. And you'll notice I never asked about the hydrogen. Well, that's because in this particular reaction, hydrogen is a gas. And since hydrogen is a gas, as the reaction proceeds, it's likely going to escape. And so we're not going to be actually asking too many questions about the hydrogen. That's not super important for our understanding, but what you'll see in a lot of these problems is it only asks about one product. You can essentially ignore the other product, because that other product is something that's either escaping or something that we're not concerned with. Every minute and every hour, I miss you, I miss you, I miss you.